thank you so much for uh, checking in on our presentation of, the, of our research uh, entitled Incremental Benefit of Perceived Organizational Support for Wellness of Faculty and Students. Uh, I am uh, Professor uh, Lauren Dyke, uh, Associate uh, Professor of Management and Department of Management Leadership, and my colleague uh, William Luz on this uh, uh, study is Assistant Professor of Management also uh, in the Department of Management and Leadership in our College of Business and Public Management. So the um, objective of our, uh, of our study is to examine the association between perceived organizational support for wellness and organizational commitment of faculty and students at the University of Laverne. We contend that even non-participating faculty and students will demonstrate increased organizational commitment because the efforts of the Randall Lewis Center for Wellbeing and Research and Wellness Programming by the Human Resource Management Department at the University of Laverne will be perceived as care and concern for faculty and students. It's expected that the incremental benefit of, uh, of perceived organizational support for wellness for faculty and student uh, organizational commitment will result in increased loyalty and job satisfaction for faculty and improved in uh, retention and graduation rates uh, for students. So these are our uh, survey measures and as you can see the student measures and the faculty measures are the same, uh, you know, exercise self-efficacy, wellness uh, participation, health changes, and uh, the only difference being is that for students, we're looking at student organizational commitment versus uh, uh, measured by a different scale uh, than for faculty, uh, we're using the Allen and Meyer 1990 organizational commitment uh, scale. <coughs> So prior research underscores numerous benefits of wellness programs for employee and organizational outcomes. For instance, Parks and Steelman found that employees who participated in company wellness programs experienced decreased absenteeism and increased job satisfaction. Further research also associates work site wellness nutrition and physical activity program participation with a change in body composition including de decreased uh, BMI, waist circumference, and body fat percentage. Organizations have received a return on investment of up to six to one on employee wellness programs. However, Dyke and Lovelace in 2012 found that employees could who could benefit the most from participating in wellness programs use it the least, citing the lack of employee interest and the lack of participation uh, on the part of high-risk employees as two common barrier, uh, barriers to successful wellness programs. Overall, studies indicate that employee participation rates are typically low, uh, typically below 50%. Uh, and the result of a recent uh, study by uh, Richmond and Needham in 2020 uh, of university and college faculty were similarly discouraging with only 34% of respondents participating in their college and university wellness programs. Uh, recently, uh, Otten Holland et al. in 2019 found perceived organizational support for wellness increased wellness program participation and employees who participated more in wellness programs had higher performance ratings, higher job satisfaction, higher intention to stay, and lower turnover. So it seems like from the literature that benefit uh, only accrues to employee participants in wellness programs. However, emerging research by Googler et al. in 2018 suggests that the presence of worksite health promotion programs shows a perceived concern for employee well-being and as such increases organizational commitment, loyalty, job satisfaction, and gratitude to the organization. Such perceived organizational support is important as an organization starts to consider the benefits of wellness programs beyond return on investment and beyond the somewhat obvious physiological improvements resulting in reduced healthcare costs, absenteeism, and presenteeism. Therefore, uh, Dr. Luz and I want to turn our attention to other employee behaviors and possible outcomes as an incremental benefit uh, to the physiological benefits that employees receive from participating in a wellness program. 
In our study, we would like to investigate the association between the presence of wellness programming at the University of Laverne from both the Lewis Center for Wellbeing and Research, as well as the University of Laverne's Human Resource Management Department. We contend that faculty and student organizational commitment, loyalty, job satisfaction, gratitude to the university, and turnover intentions will be positively impacted by the perceived organizational support that is shown from wellness programming at the University of Laverne. We also investigate the possible moderating or mediating impact as a result of participating in wellness programming at the University of Laverne in phase two of our study, by determining the level of employee health and examining its impact uh, on the association between uh, perceived organizational support and organizational commitment. Uh, however, we first want to establish a significant positive association between uh, perceived organizational support for wellness at the University of Laverne and organizational uh, uh, commitment. So uh, the implication for the University of Laverne and its community from our proposed study is to determine the additional positive impact of wellness programming at the University of Laverne, even for faculty and students who do not participate in such programming. So <clears throat> what we've done so far is we have surveyed uh, students and faculty uh, in, our, in our first round. And um, this is what you know, we, we, we found. So for students, uh, ESE or exercise self-efficacy has a positive association with both measures of wellness participation. As we can see here, a significant uh, value for uh, ULV partici uh, wellness participation as well as uh, outside of uh, University of uh, Laverne. However, only uh, wellness participation outside the University of Laverne is related to health uh, changes. Uh, and then health changes has a significant uh, but negative relationship to organizational commitment. So it might be that, um, you know, COVID-19 pandemic had some impact on uh, student participation, you know, quite obviously, uh, you know, in, in our uh, health uh, programming options at the University of, of Laverne. Um, <clears throat> so now for faculty, uh, ESE, again, exercise self-efficacy, has a positive association with wellness uh, participation outside the university. So we see here the uh, significant, uh, uh, po significant positive relationship only here for outside the uh, University of Laverne, not, not using University of Laverne's programming. Um, and this has a significant relationship with uh, health changes. Uh, with, with no part, no, with no other parts of the model being significant, unfortunately. So that's where we're at with our uh, study uh, at, at this point in time. Um, <clears throat> in terms of next steps, uh, we we want to uh, test the full theoretical model with uh, perceived organizational support, uh, as as well as uh, possibly some other uh, variables. And so this is very much uh, in progress results. Uh, we need to, uh, we've, we've analyzed the first round of survey results. And so this is the, uh, and we have distributed this, these surveys again, subsequently some, sometime later. And so we wanna, uh, our next steps are to uh, analyze uh, that data. Uh, and then the, uh, the second round of data does include uh, perceived organizational support and other variables that we that we hope will alter these results. Uh, another step that we want to do is to uh, test the model with additional uh, data from peer institutions. So uh, you know, sim organizations uh, similarly situated to to University of Laverne, uh, you know, will will be our, our our target there, and hopefully we're able to get uh, some good data from them and then to be able to report out uh, on our uh, full theoretical model. 